If you're new here, welcome. This is a live show that I do. Uh, we started it last year and we go live typically the first Friday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern time. But you may see if you're tuning in live now that it is the second Friday of this month because last Friday I was off on a sock cranking retreat for the entire weekend, which started on a Thursday. So I was gone last Friday and I'm back to share a ton of stuff with you, share with you the stuff that I made at my circular sock knitting and cranking retreat. I'm going to share with you the stuff I bought at that retreat and the stuff I got at that retreat, goodie bags, as well as door prizes. And we are also opening up a brand new first ever Crafty Gemini crochet along for my market tote, which I've been teasing y'all with for I don't know how long now. So it's ready and it's up on the website tonight. So we are just gonna do a quick technology check, make sure y'all can see me and hear me. Let me know in the chat box whether you're watching us on Facebook or on YouTube and where you are tuning in from. Let's make sure that everything is working good. I have my chat up here. All right. Uh, oh, let's see. It says because she didn't select the shipping option, but no shipping options are available. So that means I need to fix something on the site probably. Are you checking to see about that? Just go into the actual product for the class and under simple product, change it to course. And that's it. It's linked already to the class like edit it in the actual, um, it is the crochet market tote course is what it's called. We'll fix that for you in just a second. Thank you for letting us know. Oh, I see several of you are trying to do that. So just give it another minute or so. Um, my husband is going to change it up. Yeah. Right there where it says like the, what the product is, simple product. Yeah. Just change it to course and just make sure you click update and then we'll be set. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna hold this up because he can't change the camera right now. He's fixing that thing on the site. So this is the crochet market tote. Ta-da! Oh, look at you, multitasker. Thank you. So here is my crochet market tote. This was made using, hmm, I wish I had a ball. Let me go grab one real quick, just so that you all get a visual representation of the yarn in case you want to go to your local Michaels, since that seems to be the only place that carries it, carries it now. Um, it is made with Karen Cotton Cakes. This yarn right here, I have one in a solid too. So this was made in this, but um, I believe this colorway was called Cracked Pepper. It's no longer available from what I have researched. But apparently, Michaels, I contacted the manufacturer of this yarn to find out so that I can tell y'all where you can get it and all that. And I was told that Michaels owns the license to this, these chunky big cakes that bring like, you know, they have like 530 yards in them. You only need one if you're gonna make it with, uh, or if you're gonna make my crochet market tote with this yarn. So this is sold at Michaels if you live in the US. I don't know if there's Michaels in other countries. Check it out. I also, in the course, like once you sign up, there's links to other, um, to like my Amazon link, affiliate link, where you can find some different colorways and stuff. And we are actually gonna be carrying a couple. So we'll be sending out an email to the people that sign up for the crochet along about that. But this is the yarn that this sample was made in, obviously in a variegated kind of striping yarn versus a solid. So they have different options if you do get to go to a Michaels and you wanna participate in the crochet along. Here is another one that I have started with another Karen Cot Cakes, uh, Cot, Cot Cakes, wow. Cotton Cakes, Karen with a C, C-A-R-O-N, Cotton Cakes. And this is a cool striping color too. You can see it's turning out super cute. And uh, this is the little market tote that we're gonna be making. This is a Crafty Gemini exclusive pattern. I designed this a couple years ago and I'm finally launching it to share it with you all in our video crochet along. So if you wanna participate, there is a fee. The link is in the description uh, below, but all the video lessons, I believe there's gonna be six total and we'll be meeting one time live so that I can answer your questions and we can share what yarn you chose. We can see your progress and hopefully by the time we have that live Q and A, maybe your bag will be done. So the way that I have done this is that basically in this month of June, before the end of the month, we will be done making this crochet tote. So if you are ready to tackle this crochet project, which is beginner friendly, uh, if you know basic crochet stitches or you've ever crocheted anything before, you'll be able to follow along and make this with us, okay? So Karen Cotton Cakes 
if you're able to find it. Some of you may have this in your stash in maybe like smaller sizes. So just make sure that you reference um, the pattern sheet that's included in the course already. We put up the first page just so that you can gather up your supplies and know what other types of yarns you can use. But we also went ahead and stocked some similar yarn comparable in our shop for those of you that maybe can't find the Karen Cotton Cakes, this is Babe Soft Cotton Worsted. Same, similar type of, uh, this is a cotton acrylic blend and so is this. And so we have it in these three colorways. I wanted to show you all the balls on camera because the colors don't necessarily represent exactly what it looks like. And this is, what I'm seeing on the camera right now is pretty accurate to what it looks like. This color to me reads like a pale gray with a hint of Super, super, super faded purple. Uh, but the colorway is called Periwinkle. Remember that whenever you're purchasing anything on our website at craftygemini.com slash shop, when you, if there's an option for different colorways or different sizes and stuff like that, typically for colors, if you select an option from the drop down box, the image that is shown will, will reflect what you've selected. And that way you can see what colorway you're choosing, right? From the name or the color number, depending on what it is. So this is Periwinkle. And the reason I'm holding two up is because if you choose to purchase this yarn from our shop to participate in the crochet along, you will need two balls, okay? Because these are not as big as the Karen Cotton Cakes, okay? So you'll need two balls and I put that in the product description. So just in case if you're buying because you want to make the market tote in this yarn, you'll need to get two. This um, really, 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 really pale, barely green color is called Limesicle. And then this one is Sugar and Spice. And so you can see this is going to be kind of a striping variegated color that has uh, different shades of pinks and reds in it. So these are the only three colorways that we were able to get, but I did want to, you know, have some type of an option for those of you that wanted to order yarn. Uh, we also sell Crafty Gemini exclusive crochet hook sets. So if you're completely new and you're thinking, I want to learn to crochet, I want to make the market tote, I'd say if you're confident, go for it because all the video lessons are me teaching it and it's going to be super step by step. So you'll be able to go back, rewind, slow me down and watch everything. Okay. So those are the yarns that we carry in the shop for specifically for this crochet tote. And again, this is the project. Don't mind this. It's been thrown in a bag and has not been blocked. Okay. But you get the idea. It's sturdy at the bottom here. So stuff is not likely to fall through. Then you get more of a lacy finish in the middle. And then we go back to a more dense crochet stitch here to make up the top band and the handles. All right. So yeah. Oh, good. Patty says I got in and I got the class. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Mr. Crafty Gemini for fixing that for us. So if you do want to go ahead and sign up to join us for the crochet along, that's all working now. So you should be good to go. This is a digital only crochet along. So we don't have an actual physical product kit to go with it, but we did provide, you know, we have the crochet hooks and we have a couple different yarn options for you. If you did want to go ahead and purchase the actual products you need to make it. Okay. I'm super excited to finish this one and I'm actually excited to start another one because it kind of whips up pretty quickly. So if you crochet, this is going to be nothing for you. All right. So that is that. Oh, awesome. Della. She says, I'm all signed up. <laughs> Heather says, oh, she says, seriously, how are you tempting me with a new craft? You Heather, you don't already crochet. Heather has been around for a very long time and she does all the things, bag making, hand embroidery, quilting, hand quilting, foundation, paper, piecing, quilt club. What's one more, right, Heather? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me move this out the way. So y'all already know what's going on with that. If you're tuning in late, anything that I'm mentioning, the links are in the description box below. If you're watching us on YouTube, we'll also go ahead and include it in the chat box and in the post if you're watching us on Facebook, okay? Oh, great. Mary Grace says she's in too. Oh, I can't wait to see it. And I like that because... I'm kind of, you know, we're slowly growing this fiber side of our business with crochet and knitting and carrying different yarns and stuff like that. And so I, I kind of like that having like a small group. So when we meet in the live Zoom Q&A chat, it'll be kind of a more intimate crowd. It'll just be smaller, less people, you know, stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, speaking of yarn and adding stuff to our inventory, we have added just a little bit of self striping yarn. And I'm going to show you some of these colors because, wow. and this is like m m basically for sock knitters. I mean, like that's, let's be real. That's like the main reason for this, 
for this type of yarn. Now this is a semi-local to me, Florida, I live in North Central Florida, dyer. Uh, her name is Caitlin and she runs String Theory Color Works, okay? Look at these ridiculous colors. What? Okay, um, let's just say I found out about her. I think somebody, I think Michelle told me about her at a crank in last year. And I had looked on the website and I inquired about opening up like a wholesale account so we can carry some of the yarns. And then I forgot all about it. Well, this past weekend, I was at that sock knitting retreat. Of course, there was tons of sock knitting yarn. And um, somebody had won, I think like she, uh, or String Theory donated um, door prizes of the self-striping yarn that they make. And so I remembered it again. And so we had a little coupon code in our goodie bag. So I ordered some and then I thought, oh, I think I had a wholesale account with this, with this company. So I did opened it up and, um, I went ahead and ordered some to carry in the shop. This stuff is amazing. If you want to see how it knits up, make sure that on my website in the gallery area, I put the pictures of like little knit swatches. And of course that's just gonna represent how, if you knit with the self-striping yarn, how it will appear, like what type of fabric you'll get. Um, if you crochet, it's gonna be different, okay? With it, but I mean, I saw the colors and I was like, got to have it, got to have it. And again, because there's different colorways and different weights, I'll, I'll show you just an example here. These are the same colorway, the colorway, um, I believe I heard somebody at the retreat saying that Caitlin, who owns this, and her husband are scientists. So all the names to their yarns and colorways and the yarn base are all sciency based. So this is the same colorway. I mean, doesn't that look amazing? Okay, super pretty. Um, this is called Intertropical Convergence Zone. That's the colorway. Super cute that every skein or every hank includes a little stitch marker. Isn't that cute? So that's already attached in there. And then the yarn base, meaning what type of yarn is it, what weight it is, and the fiber blend, has a different name. So like these two say entanglement, and that means that's the yarn base, and that means that this is a 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. For you sock knitters, you know that that's very, very common. That's what most people use to knit their socks. And then this one, same colorway, but different yarn base. This is inertia. And so this is an 80% superwash merino wool and 20% nylon. Okay. So slightly different, but both would work beautifully for socks, whether you're hand knitting them or cranking them on a sock machine, like I will show you in a bit. Okay. Oh, Wondering Craft Few says, uh, or Wondering Crafter Few says, hi, I'm new here. Love those colors. Aren't they pretty? I could just hold them. Ah but I'm selling them. So you can head over to craftygemini.com and check those out. Here's another one, so pretty. This is on the 7525 base and this is called oxalic acid. And again, remember whenever I'm selling something on the website that has different, uh, different things that you can select from the drop down menu, just click on one and right there the image for that will populate so you can see which colorway represents um, what you're selecting in the image. So this pretty one, look how cute. I mean, they, the, the colors are so bold. And if you've ever dyed yarn before, self-striping yarn is not easy to do, okay? It's a whole mathematical thing because each chunk of one specific color in it has to repeat at like the same rate. So it all has to be measured out as it's dunked into the different colors that is represented in that colorway. It's pretty wild. And for 26 or 27 bucks, I mean, it's just awesome, awesome yarn. Um, this one is called, <clears throat> let's see if I can pronounce this, Crassulation Acid Metabolism, or CAM, C-A-M. So you'll see that one there. I have a couple more. I'm just going to show you just because the colors are so pretty to look at, even if you don't use them. So this one is on the 80-20 blend, and it's called Boomerang Nebula. And then this one is called Biology. Look how pretty that is. I mean, look, can you imagine a whole yarn stash like that? Amazing. So we do have just a couple of those. Obviously one of these hanks is plenty to make even two pairs of socks because they are, they're a hundred grams. So that's plenty, 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 plenty. Clarissa says great for a summer shawl. It's wonderful yarn to work with that too because it's a lightweight, right? Fingering weight. We say sock yarn, but that just means that it's that weight. And typically when we use a yarn to make socks, we want it to have some type of nylon, although not everybody does. People, I know people that make it in like cotton bamboo blends and stuff like that. The nylon just helps um, the yarn last longer. Like it makes it stronger, okay? All right. Um, 
Yes, Patty says she downloaded the pattern PDF, but there's not a pattern in the file. So read the notes that are there, Patty. All the calendar dates are included for the crochet along, so it tells you what date to check back when each different lesson and the pattern and all that stuff will be um, listed there. We've only included the first page of the PDF, just enough for you to go ahead and get your supplies and gather up everything to get started. So today is Friday, June 10th, 2022, and it's going to open up the PDF and the first several lessons will be posted next Friday. So you have a week to gather up all your stuff to get started, okay? So hopefully that helps with that, um, but there should be a little note on that page that tells you that as well. Okay, so that is the other yarn that we've added to the site, and since we are on the topic of sock yarn, let's go ahead and move on to what I did at my sock cranking retreat. And of course, this is going to have more sock yarn. Okay, so let me see where I wanna start. I'm gonna start off with the socks that I made. And um, I know a lot of you in these Fiber Friday episodes, several of you have been asking like, hey, can you do a tutorial on the sock cranking machine or can you show us that and all that. I will uh, let you know that I have just ordered a light. It's like a little circular, you know, like those ring lights that people take selfies on. It's a little ring light that clamps and so a lot of the ladies had it at our retreat. So I've ordered that so that I can have a little setup and I'm feeling more confident in my sock cranking skills. So expect some videos coming very soon, okay? But I have some socks at different steps, and so I thought today I would show you the yarn, talk to you about how it works, what the prep is for us to get started on the circular sock knitting machine. Um, let's see, one, two, three. Yep, one, two, three. Oh, and four, duh, I was like, I know I did more at that retreat. Okay, so these are all the socks that I was working on during my sock knitting retreat. And the retreat was called the Hot Socks Crank In, hosted by Michelle. Hi, Michelle. You can find her under the turned heel on Instagram. And the retreat was here in North Central Florida, where I used to host my retreats years ago. All right, so here's what I did. I did my regular shorty socks, which y'all have seen me show off here before. And this yarn, I don't have the cone for it, but it is the active yarn that we also carry on our website. Uh, you can see that this one goes with this, these socks. I put them on these sock blockers, but Lord knows my feet are way too big for these little baby sock blockers. But because I haven't blocked or washed the socks or anything like that, I just thought I'd put it on here just to show you a little bit more of the shape. But yes, I have large and wide feet, as does everybody else in my house. So these regular size sock blockers don't really work for us. But I made this longer pair of socks with a hung hem. Haven't been blocked, but I will. Even the girls at my gym were like, are you wearing any of the socks you made at your retreat? I was like, no, I have to show them on Fiber Friday first before I start wearing them and wrecking them. But this is a pair of shorty socks, and I believe this is a Jamie Mayfield pattern. If you're into circular sock knitting machine, I'm sure you know who she is. And um, I think this is like the third pair I have just like this. You've probably seen these before. These aren't the old pair. These I knit at the retreat. So I did those too. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And so this is another colorway from Active Yarn. Uh, and we do have some cones left. I know I plugged this before in, um, in a previous episode of Fiber Friday, but we still have some different colorways left. So again, for that, you can click down on the drop down box and whatever colorway you choose, it will show it to you in the image. So you can choose, hey, I like those colors, no, and then you can just select a different one and, and see if you like that. Oh, how fun, Mary Grace says, I'm going to a wool fest in Estes Park, Colorado on Sunday for yarn fun. That sounds amazing. Yarn shows, quilt shows, they're so fun. <laughs> All right, so that was that one, two, and those are finished. I kitchenered them and everything, meaning I closed up the end, and I'll show you what that means because I have one here. Another pair that I made at the retreat as well, and one is Kitchenered and one is not. So I thought this would be a good way to show you how this works. So this is one sock, not quite as tall as the other one I showed and not quite as short as my shorty sock. But this one, the toe is Kitchenered. And of course, this is where, bless her heart, Annie B helped me at the retreat. I dropped a stitch. If you drop a stitch on the circular sock machine, like on the decreases or increases of the heel or a toe, 99% <laughs> of the time we scrapped the whole thing and she was like stop get up take a break I'm gonna try and save it for you and so she started doing sock surgery at my machine and so we managed to salvage them they're for me so I don't really care too much um, but definitely they're not super perfect and then another thing I had was because the same yarn I was using here's the cone that it was on and I'll show you what the ball of yarn looks like because this was my first time making a whole pair of socks with 
a little ball of yarn that I wound onto a cone. This is Knit Picks. Knit Picks Felici in the colorway Lasso. I've had this in my stash, I don't know, three years, more, less, at least two or three years. So it's a fingering weight, 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon, each little ball. And so because each ball is not quite as much as like the bigger skeins, say like this self-striping yarn that I showed you before, um, this is 50 grams, so this is half of this. I made this sock like five times at the retreat and I kept dropping a stitch at the, literally the last stitch of completing the sock. I would go to put on my waist yarn to take it off of the machine and the stitches went doo -doo 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 and disappeared. So I was really struggling with this. So thank you, Annie B, for helping me save that last sock. Then the other one I stitched, it was fine. I did it on the machine. And so this is what I wanted to show y'all in case you're not familiar with a circular sock knitting machine. This is called a bonnet. And this thing, you can see where this green yarn is knit into the, ye the top yellow part of this bonnet. This is how you start a project on the circular sock machine. So we hang the, the loops here on this bonnet over the needles on our cylinder to get started. Then we put on waste yarn or scrap yarn, which basically just means a yarn similar in weight that's going to deal with the tension the same as you want the actual sock yarn to take but it's not gonna be included in the project, right? This gets unraveled. So like this sock had this on it too, but once I'm done with the sock, you just unravel the waist yarn, okay? So that's the waist yarn. You can see how it's tucked in there. This is called a hung hem, the way that I finished these, cause I'm not yet <laughs> using my ribber on my machine to do ribbing because that's kind of a whole nother world but we haven't ventured on to that yet. So then you do the sock. So I do, I do, I knit some, I knit, yeah, so like I knit, say, 20, 20 rounds, and then I hang the hem, which means those 20 rounds that I did, I'm folding them together and basically attaching the first one and the last. And so you get that folded edge. So that's what a hung hem is, okay? So you don't have a raw edge, so they don't unravel, right? It's just like any other regular hem in garment sewing. So that was like 20 stitches, and then it got folded in half, and those stitches got picked up there so that I have that folded hem, okay? So we have like a, a finished edge to it. And then I knit, 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 knit. And then I decide, you know, after I counted my rows, however many I do, you end up working out your own recipe and formula. And then I start the heel. So I do my toes and heels on the machine. You don't usually start like that. And I know a lot of people that have the circular sock knitting machine, they'll just do the tubes and then they'll go in and add what they call afterthought toes, heels, and sometimes cuffs. And I'll show you an example of that because I practiced that technique at the retreat too. But so I knit, 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 I work the heel. Then I pick up again. I stop increasing and decreasing here. And I knit, 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 knit. Just going crank, crank, crankity, crank, crank. It's super fun and relaxing. And the sound is so satisfying as long as you're not dropping stitches. And then we work, 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 and then I work the toe, okay? So because the machine is like this, open, you don't actually close it on the machine. So then I put back on the waist yarn, see that lime green again, and it's usually a bright color because you want some high contrast so that you can tell the difference between the yarn you use for your sock and what is the stuff that you don't want in your project, okay? That's just holding the live stitches. That's basically what the waist yarn is there for. And then I cut the waist yarn and I can take it off my machine and like this, it won't unravel. So I wanted to show you that so you can see if you have any cranking friends and they send you a picture like this, they're like, look, I made a sock. And then people are like, that, that's a sock? That don't look like a sock. But if you crank, you know the anatomy of how, what it takes and what it looks like to crank an actual sock. So yes, that is my sock. None of this obviously will be in the finished project. And then this waist yarn will be gone. I will Kitchener this shut, which means basically grafting this side of the blue yarn with this side of the blue yarn to complete the toe, okay? So... I find that that's kind of interesting, especially when you first are like, what even does a sock cranking machine do? So I thought I would share that with you all. And that way you can also see this Knit Picks Felici yarn. If you have a self-striping yarn, it's fun to see it work up so that you see, you know, how the stripes come out in the finished project. I'm not a big stickler for making matching socks. A lot of knitters are, but I'm not. I just like to see fun pops of color. <laughs> how many times have you heard me say that? I just like a fun pop of color. I say that for everything. Oh my gosh, Heather, I'm so excited for you. She says, okay, I'm all signed up for the crochet course. Woohoo! Can't wait to see what yarn y'all use, what colors and all that. Okay, so socks. Here is another 
sock. So you'll see that this looks very different to what I just showed you coming off of the sock cranking machine. Well, this also was cranked on my Erlbacher Gearheart Speedster. I don't think I've said today yet what machine I have, but that is what I use. And I wanted to show you this. I pulled this out. I told my husband, I think I'm going to make you socks with this because this was the first, first tube I cranked on my machine two summers ago when I first got it. And I'm pretty sure you see how this is wider. So the gauge was different. This yarn was a Knit Picks Felici also, but you can see it was like it went red and then faded red to purple and then went all the way to purple. So he said he doesn't mind having one red sock and one purple sock. But what I brought this out to show y'all, when people say I crank tubes, or if you see an Etsy listing, you good? If you see an Etsy listing for a sock cranker who says, I crank tubes, the way that those services tend to work is you buy the yarn, say you buy this. Okay, I have this gorgeous yarn. And you don't want to knit the socks by hand. You can send this off to a sock cranker and they will knit you from the yarn you send an entire tube like this. Perfectly done. And then you would go in and say, okay, if you did, let's just say, if you're going to make a hundred gram tube, it's going to be a lot longer. Okay. I'll just tell you that right now because this started off a hundred gram skein or a hank of yarn. I wound it onto here. If you're wondering how I wound it onto here, there's a lot of different tools and they're typically really hard to find like cone winders and stuff. I buy these cardboard cones. I think I got them from Earl Bacher. And then I bought this little thing. It's like an adapter that you put into your drill. They tell you not to use a drill, so pretend that you don't see a drill here. You just see one of those battery-operated screwdrivers, like the ones with less power than this. <laughs> I put it on this because I don't have patience. I need it to go faster. And so you slip this into the cone like that. And then you go, let me turn this sucker on. Maybe the battery died. Probably yes. And so you would just press this and zzz, you'd be holding it coming off of your yarn swift and just going up and down and up and down, winding the cone or winding the yarn onto here. Because when we use the circular sock knitting machine, it needs to be coming off of something like this. Some of the ladies at the retreat were um, knitting off of like cakes, but sometimes that can get really tangled because the center of the cake can collapse. So I have found I have the best results when I do it like this off of a cone, okay? So that's how we would wind it. If you were to buy something like this that doesn't come on a cone, you would wind it yourself onto the cardboard cones, okay? So this colorway is amazing. I think you would agree. And this was a custom colorway by, let me pull up the ladies business who was a vendor at our retreat. This is by Lonesome Pine Yarn Works. And uh, she offered to wind it for us. If you purchase the yarn there, she wound it up for me. So I was super excited to just put it right there and start cranking my tube. And this is a 7525 um, Superwash Merino wool blend as well with nylon. 463 yards total. And the colorway was called Hot Socks 2022 because that was the name of our retreat, Hot Socks Crankin' and it's 2022. So this was a custom colorway. Most of us, I think, at the retreat got it. Look at those speckles. Isn't that cute? So you can see that the 100 gram uh, hank that I purchased, I still have a lot of yarn on here. You could make, I think somebody said from this four total socks, obviously depending on how long or short you went. But here's what I did. We put on the, the bonnet like I showed you earlier. Then we did waist yarn. Then I knit, knit, knit. I hung the hem. That hem is already done. You can see it's fully finished, not raw. And then I crank, 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 cranked the rows that I normally do. So like this pink sock will end up being about the same length as this one because I added whatever rows I typically do in my formula from here, like for the, the length of the leg before I start the heel and then the length of the foot before I start the toe. And so I combined those rows and just knit a tube here. Then I had waist yarn and then I went back with this and continued with this. So I had a super long thing that had a breaking point here. So I ended up with two identical chunks. You can see the waist yarn is still there. And again, this waist yarn is there to hold these live stitches temporarily while I find the time <laughs> to go in and knit the toe. But this one I did at the retreat. Thank you to Miss Mary from m and m Charming, so hold on. M and M so charming, I think is their name. They do videos. Oh my gosh, did I just slip these needles out of here? I will lose my mind if I drop these stitches. Whoo, saved. Okay. 
So here's what I did. I wanted a good pop of color. So from the girls that were selling this yarn, the Lonesome Pine Yarn Works, they had little mini skeins of different colored yarns. So I purchased this mini. She wound it up for me too. Thank you. And then I had needles with me. So I picked up the live stitches and I started knitting the toe thanks to Miss Mary's pattern. And you look at that. I think it looks super cute. So I just need to Kitchener this off to close up that toe. And then I will go in here, fold this in half or count my rows halfway through the leg and the length of the toe or the foot part. I'll come in here and halfway here, I'll uh, do the same thing where like I pick up live stitches, cut my yarn, and then I'll knit the heel so that I put in the heel halfway in there. So this is another way that you can use a circular sock knitting machine. Instead of doing the heels and toes like we tend to do some of us on the machine, you can just do the tube. And then this part you can do afterwards. And we were talking about this at the retreat of like, why would you do this? And for me, I like this because I can throw this in a little bag and I can take this with me. If I don't have access to my machine or I'm in a car and I need a little project bag, this is something that is still cranked on my machine, but I can go in and do a little bit of hand knitting to it. And I thought I did a pretty good job because these needles are way bigger and the yarn is actually a little bit thinner than the pink color, like the, the contrast is, and the gauge looks almost perfect. So I was pretty happy with that. I wasn't too picky, but I'm happy with the way that it's looking. Okay. Thank you, Clovis. She says, looks great. Um, oh, Mary Grace has a question. She says, does the hung hem end up as stretchy as a ribbed cuff? So let's go ahead and yank on it. I mean, because it's knit, you're still going to have that stretch. I think it's even, I think it's maybe just as stretchy as a ribbed cuff. The only thing is that it might not cinch in as much as a ribbed cuff. And I actually have a pair of ribbed socks here that I'll show you. So we'll scoot away from this, but I did want to show you those, you know, a couple different ways that you can make socks all on the machine or half and half with that. So then we had like a little garage sale at the retreat and some of the ladies who make and sell their stuff brought their goodies to sell. I was laughing because I'm like, here we are sock crankers and we're buying socks from another cranker. But it's cool to see how they do it, what yarns they use, different techniques, different hems and stuff. So this, uh, these I bought from Miss Anita. And you can see this one here has a ribbed cuff. So see how narrow that is because she did a one by one ribbing on her machine. So it might not stretch as much as that one, but because the gauge is also tighter, like the fabric that she created is a tighter fabric, but that's a one by one rib. And that was done on the circular sock knitting machine. Isn't that cute? And that looks, it's not a, like that, the, the top edge is not hung. It looks like a sewn off binding to me. So you don't get that double layered bulk you know, from the hung hem, so it's not as bulky at the top, but you still get that really good stretch and it really cinches in because of the ribbing, okay? So those were, I just bought a couple pairs from her because I wanted to see, but this is what pretty and perfectly made socks look like after you wash and um, block them. <laughs> when I picked them up, I was like, you block your socks? She's like, oh yeah, I wash and block everything. I was like, they look so perfect. So that's how they would look. Then I bought these, I had to, they look like sprinkles on frosting. Um, and look at the, she has a hung hem on here, but it, it's one of those tab socks, like where the top back, you can pull them up through there. You know, sometimes your socks sink into your shoe. These stay up because it's higher than the front. Isn't that real pretty? I think those turned out so cute. So I bought them. I told her whatever extra large size you have, I'm getting them because we have huge feet here in my house. I wear an 11 and my daughter's 10 and already wears a 10. So, <laughs> and then I got these. We'll see if my son or my husband wants them. I think my son, my husband's feet are super duper wide. But look how cute those are. The same type of a hung hem with a tab. The back goes a little bit higher. Super cute. So anyways, those were socks that I purchased at the retreat. <laughs> so thank you, Miss Anita, for bringing those. Uh, let's see. Yes, Becky says confetti socks. Aren't they cute? And it's just, I mean, you cannot not love a good speckled yarn. They're just bling, pops of color galore. Love it. Look at that. So cute. Okay, so that was that. And then we had a local vendor, um, my friend Ginger and Barb, who used to run a brick and mortar store, a yarn shop here in town. And the first night I told Ginger, did you bring any fiber? And she says, no, but I can bring some tomorrow. So I was like, please do. 
So uh, she brought fiber and I dug through and I think working with the pink and these hot bright pops of color, which I already love. I was like, I need some more bright wool in my stash for spinning. So I bought these four braids from her and I believe they're all the same fiber content. This is BFL and silk. So blue face Lester to wool um, and silk. And so is this. Yeah, these are all BFL and silk. Look at these colors. So I will keep y'all posted as I knit this up into gorgeous yarn. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Don't ask. <laughs> That's like a spinner's thing. I was trying to convince one of my friends at the retreat to get into spinning. And she's like, I have so much yarn. Why would I want to knit or spin yarn to knit stuff with? And I'm like, no, 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 you have it all wrong. You might recall from a previous Fiber Friday episode where I felt the same way, where like, why would you spin the yarn to then knit with it? You can just pick yarn and start working with it right there. But spinning is like its own separate thing. I spin because I love to spin, not because I care to do something specifically with the yarn. So I'm super excited to spin these up and add little mix-ins and little bling and Angelina fibers, but I thought I would share how fun and bright these are. Now, Ginger's company name is Euphoric Fibers. You, like as in sheep, use E-W-E. -E. So Euphoric Fibers. Um, I'm not sure if she sells online, but I think she has a Facebook page, so I'm sure y'all can look her up if you wanna check that out. So Euphoric Fibers, and she sells fiber for spinning. That's actually my first spinning teacher. That's who taught me how to spin. Um, oh, speaking of spinning, my EEW 6.0 um, e-spinner here. This is a bat. I think I showed y'all this bat that I purchased, I think at the beginning of the year. I spun the whole thing up at the retreat. So several of us there were spinners too. And so we went ahead and spent a couple evenings spinning. Look how fun those bits and bobs and shimmer and... <laughs> People are like, what are you going to do with that yarn? I'm like, I have no idea. It's just fun to look at all the pops of color as I'm spinning it, right? I think so. So I spun up that whole bat. So I have this bobbin done. And so that was that was four, um, four ounces too. So that's a good bit of yarn there. I was trying to spin a little bit thicker, but if you spin, you know how it is. Once you get used to spinning thinner, it's like harder to go back and spin thicker than you did before. Okay. Here, let's go over the goodie bags that we got at the retreat. My door prizes and my goodie bags, so y'all can see. Oh yes, Tracy says, I love the silver thread through it. Yeah, so those are like Angelina fibers. And the bats, like when you have the fiber, either like this or roving or whatever you may have, like on the drum carter or on my blending board, I'll add little bits. Like we do streaks like that. My daughter and I like to do that stuff. So that as you're spinning, again, you get a little pop of like sheen and shimmer. It's so, so, so much fun to spin. So we got this cool bag. I threw a bunch of stuff in here, but I'll show you some of the stuff that was included from the companies that donated door prizes. This is from Olive and 2U. So 2 as in the number T-W-O, 2. And then U, again, like sheep, E-W-E. -E. So Olive and 2U. And this colorway is called Cranky Blue Jean. It's a 75-25, 75 percent superwash merino wool 25 percent nylon you see the trend there with sock knot yarn for a sock knitting retreat how pretty is that this color is not a full solid but i feel like i can add a contrasting yarn to this in like any color any speckle anything i mean this to me reads like a neutral i could definitely do some really fun stuff with this okay so that was that I got this is from the same company that made that custom color for the hot socks crank in Look at how bright that hot pink is. It's like almost blowing out the camera shot. I love it. And again, that company was Lonesome Pine Yarn Works. And I believe she was, she has an online shop or something because she was talking about that that weekend. This is another little mini that I got. And this is from Fairway Fibers, it looks like. I can read through here. Yep, some from Fairway Fibers. They donated that. So different people had different colors of yarn in their bag. We got a little sample pack of fiber rinse from Unicorn Fiber. This is a concentrated fabric softener for your knits. Cool. This is a scrubby. And so it was cool this weekend to also see some of the crankers that were there. I mean, so one lady, I think it was Miss Anita, was saying that she has had her uh, circular sock knitting machine for like 11 years. I'm like, what? Um... And they make and sell stuff at craft shows, so they do a lot beyond making socks. Because a lot of people think, is that all you can make on that machine because it's pretty expensive? They make headbands and bows and this and that and hats and dolls and all kind of stuff. So it was cool to see. I don't know who put this in here, but it's like a little scrubby. 
and you make it on the sock machine. So remember, we're talking about making stuff in a tube. If you cinch up the yarn, it's going to gather it and gather it. And if you flatten it, then you get a little pancake with two gathered ends here. So Violante was also one of the other ladies that was at the retreat was showing us how to make a flower using a similar technique, like a little sunflower. And they add them as little embellishments to other projects. So it was a lot of cool stuff. I took a lot of notes. <laughs> it was good to see people doing different things. So this is a yarn that's like a little bit scrubby so that you can use it to wash dishes and stuff. Um, oh, I got another little mini. Look at this cool variegated. This is a crazy beautiful color. And this is from Four Pearls Yarn Shop, which is in Central Florida. I haven't yet gone. And then there's like a notebook and some other goodies and coupon codes and a ruler and all kinds of stuff and my notes and some patterns and things like that. So as you can see, we got a lot of good stuff. Good sample packs, good minis, even full skeins of yarn in there. And then we were pulling tickets for door prizes, and I won some good stuff. This is from loveandleche.com. So love, love, and leche, meaning milk in Spanish. And let me see what else is in here. They're like little balms. So this one is a citrus rose. It says anywhere balm, all natural mini lotion. Oh, my gosh, that smells so good. So that's one. This is a little lotion bar that's lavender mint. So when if you've never used a lotion bar before, they're a lot of fun. The warmth of your hand melts the oils in the bar, so you just rub, 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 and that's it. And that's plenty. So I, in Florida here, definitely need to keep this indoors um, just so that it doesn't start melting. You wouldn't want to keep this in like a hot car in the summer and stuff like that. But super cute, all natural. And then this one is another lotion bar, and this is a lemongrass. This is the one... I used already at the retreat. I rubbed it all over my hands. It smells so good. So, so good. So loveandleche.com is that company. And um, they provided these as door prizes. So I won that one. Super cute. And perfect for me because anything to moisturize my hands from gardening, working with wool, working with animals, and working with my kettlebells tends to tear up my hands. Okay. The other door prize, some of us won two door prizes because they still had prizes and they kept pulling tickets. I got these two. Oh, no, it's not two. It's just one. It's just big. Oh, no, it is two. They're just tied together. These are two hanks of cotton, bamboo, and silk. And this was also donated by Four Pearls uh, Yarn Shop. And I believe they're in Winter Haven. I haven't been, but some of the other Florida girls mentioned the shop. They say it's amazing that it's run by great people. And my mom doesn't live too, too far away from there. So I may have to make a trip next time I'm down that way. So it is cotton, bamboo, and silk. Haiku. It says Kobasi by Haiku. And um, it sounds like a perfect yarn for hot Florida, right? So who knows what I can make with this, but I'll see. Each one has 220 yards, so it's still a good, decent bit, okay? So thank you to Four Pearls Yarn Shop. Yep, they are. It says it right here on the bag, Winter Haven, Florida. And they have a website, Four, the number Four Pearls, as in Pearl the Stitch, P-U-R-L-S dot com. So that was a lot. We had a good time. I won a lot of stuff, and I bought stuff. I bought the two yarns and those four braids of fiber. And I think that's it. Wow, I've been talking about yarn for 45 minutes. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to look through the chat real quick and see what I have. Let's see. Oh, March says, I have problems with store-bought socks because they're too tight around the ankle or calf. Maybe I have to knit my own. So that is definitely a solution. It was funny to see as we were there at the retreat, the different ways that the crankers were changing things up for the socks. Like if they were making stuff for themselves, um, Annie B who had helped me fix those drop stitches the one night, she was saying her foot is really, really narrow and has really narrow ankles. So she adds a strip of Lycra to her yarn, even if the yarn she's using already had nylon in it, because she says it helps cinch it in. So for narrow feet, narrow ankles, instead of having a loose sock, you knit it with the, the added lycra strand in it and it brings it all together so that the socks stay better on her foot. For me, I was like loosening up the tension, loosening up everything so that we had a decent enough gauge that would still stay on my feet, but I needed more room because my, big, my feet are big and wide. So when you make stuff yourself, you obviously can customize it to whatever you need. So I, it, it, was, it was cool to see that, to hear people saying like, oh, well, I always do this because whatever. Or when I make socks for my husband, I always got to do this, you know? So it was cool to see the different changes and, and formula or recipes that people were using to create their specific socks. 
Thank you. Yes, if you're enjoying these Fiber Friday episodes, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, whether you're watching us on Facebook or on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, feel free to hit the share button if you have other friends that might be into this kind of thing. It's kind of cool to sit back, grab a cup of tea, maybe knit, crochet, do some hand stitching while you sit back and listen to me chat and show you pretty colors <laughs> of stuff. Oh, Monique says Kobasi is wonderful. So you have some experience with this yarn. I have not. It just sounds lightweight to me because it's cotton bamboo silk. And actually it has also nylon in it. I'm looking at the back of the tag here, 21% elastic nylon. So I'm going to look it up. I'm, I'm going to look up on Ravelry because you know on Ravelry you can type in the type of yarn and then see what type of projects people have made with that yarn. So that usually is a good place to start to give me some inspiration. So I'm definitely going to look that yarn up um, and see what, what, what type of projects people are making with it. I think some of the ladies at the retreat did mention that they make socks with it too. I don't know how that would work for me, but we'll see. Uh, we'll definitely do some research. Okay. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Catherine. She says, yay, I'm in too. Thank y'all who are signing up for the crochet along for the Crafty Gemini Market Tote. This guy, if you're tuning in new or late, we're going to be making my crochet market tote. It's a good little summer project, pretty beginner friendly, some simple stitches. Uh, and I am obviously going to teach you step by step in my video lessons how to do it. So the link to sign up for this um, digital only experience is in the chat box below and I'm looking at this like did I put that stitch there to hold it or not because I legit have a knot in my yarn so I'll have to undo that when I go to pick up and finish filming that okay um oh awesome hey Michelle she says she's kitchenering socks hi Michelle Michelle hosted our sock cranking retreat it was a big hit and we had a good good time I think I have covered everything y'all that was kind of a lot but I will be back. Remember I said I'm getting my light or I ordered my light. It should be arriving this weekend so that I can see about doing some videos for you. I know that not everybody is going to buy a circular sock knitting machine because they ain't cheap. But if you're into like figuring out how does that even work, that's the kind of stuff I want to show you. It's like this is what we do because of this. You know, I love to ask and to explain when I teach the why of everything. And so I find it so fascinating because it's not electric or computerized. It's just a fully mechanical machine and it just blows my mind how they work. So I'll be doing some videos on that once I get good lighting because it really is tricky to film that type of uh, project. The needles are so small, everything is so concentrated and you really need to zoom in there and get some good shots. But I will be bringing that to y'all in a future Fiber Friday for sure. Okay, so thank you everybody for tuning in tonight. Apologies for delaying it by one week, but I think it was worth it. I got to share a bunch of cool new stuff with y'all. We are getting ready to start that crochet along. Remember that the video lessons and the pattern go up next Friday. So you have this whole week. You can sign up today and you have a week to gather up your yarn, your supplies. We have listed some yarn that will work for that project in our shop. That's the Babe Soft Cotton Worsted. You can also use the um, Karen Cotton Cakes that is only now available, I think, on Amazon and Michaels. They have the license to it. Apparently, that's what they told me at the manufacturer when I called to speak to somebody about getting the yarn. So if you have a Michaels nearby, Go pick up one of these and that's all you need is one of these big ones or two of these smaller ones that we carry in our online shop to get started with my crocheted market toe. Okay, so I hope everybody has a great weekend. I have a lot of just looking at this mess. I have a lot of projects I need to get busy working on and I'm in the middle of a foundation paper piecing quilt club. So all the crafty goodness this summer and I will definitely be back with more for you. So thanks again for watching everybody and enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will see y'all next week for Whip Wednesday if you're into sewing and quilting or whatever the first Friday in July is for another episode of Fiber Friday.